i'm katherine endy, the family life coach, and today we are going to be talking about bedtime struggles. i'm wondering if this is an issue in your household. so i want to start by sort of setting the the scene and the and the kind of the background of what's going on for your child or your children at bedtime. so one thing is that everyone is tired, right? like they're tired, you're tired, you're probably completely done. i know for me i usually tap out of parenting at about 8 p.m. and my kids are older so they they actually don't tap out of engaging <laughs> until much later than that but usually around 8 p.m. i'm like I'm done parenting for the day. Um, but, you know, we still have to get those children to bed and that's part of our role as a parent. So we wanna try to make bedtime as um, connected and like feel as good as possible, right? So if you've seen my video about role versus relationship, go back and uh, revisit that one to think a little bit more about you know, you've got to do your responsibilities and your role as a parent, but you also want to do it in a way that is the best for your relationship with your child and bedtime is a really like tender time right because everyone's tired we're trying to settle down it's a nice time for snuggles and connection and we want to really use that to our advantage to help bedtime go as smoothly as possible so first thing is to remember that everyone is already tired including you and another thing to remember is that little kids just want to play so that's how they understand their world. That's how they interact with the world. And they don't really want it to end, right? Even when they're really tired, most children don't want it to end. So just keeping in mind that, you know, if you were engaged in something that you really, really enjoyed doing, and then it was gonna come to an end, like just keep in mind that, that discomfort from their point of view, right? That they might not, they just might not wanna stop playing. And so being able to be sensitive to that and, and giving them a heads up about what's gonna happen when the play is going to end is helpful to remember and then kids need connection and particularly at the end of the day when they're feeling tired um, perhaps their hertz cup is very full so if you've seen my talk on the hertz cup and the love cup you'll know that the hertz cup is sort of like all that junky uncomfortable negative emotion that builds up throughout the day and it sort of fills up this cup right and then all of that negative emotion needs to go somewhere. And so sometimes if kids haven't had a chance to empty that out, they might just be full of all this like negative emotion that might need to go somewhere before they're able to settle down and relax. So they, and they need connection, right? Like always kids need connection, but particularly if, you know, if things haven't gone so great, if they haven't had such a great day, if they're just especially tired and cranky, like they're gonna need some connection time during bedtime and that, like this is a great opportunity for it right so but you know how do you do this when you're also feeling depleted and tired and burnt out so let's start let's talk about what to do um knowing that things like refusing to put on pjs refusing to brush teeth getting all silly like these are the kinds of things that parents struggle with at bedtime right the kids get like especially crazy at bedtime or especially defiant or whiny or they just don't want to all of that right and some of that's because they want to keep playing and some of that's because the, you know they're just depleted and they just kind of can't even right like are you ever so tired that you just like don't even want to brush your teeth i know i get that way sometimes and kids really get that way and when we get that way like we have like the reserves to okay no i just need to brush my teeth because that's what we do and I don't want to have to go to the dentist you know I don't want to get cavities right but kids don't have the ability to think ahead like that and so if they're feeling like oh I just can't even they're going to need a little extra support to get that task done because they don't have the reserves like we do so keeping that in mind so what do you do first step like before bedtime even begins i want to encourage you to even if you can only do a very small version of this is to kind of fill your own tank first so what i mean by that is can you schedule some time you know maybe you begin bedtime pretty soon after dinner time but can you build in like 10 minutes where your kids have a little bit of like quiet book time by themselves or um you know maybe they engage in like some drawing like some kind of quiet activity 
where they where you know like this is part of the routine and they know this is part of the routines like we finish up dinner we clean up and then you go and get to look at your books or maybe you get to go pick out your books while dad and mom have a little conversation at the table or maybe you get a little alone time or maybe you you know if there are enough adults in the house like maybe you just take a walk around the block like something to charge your batteries so that you're ready to handle the challenge of bedtime because i don't know about you but for us that bedtime was like one of the hardest times of the day and i know a lot of parents struggle with this for all the reasons that we mentioned so finding ways to build in a little bit of cup filling right before bedtime is going to help the whole process go so much more smoothly so see if you can get creative and find ways to build in a little bit of that time for yourself in between dinner and bedtime and even if it can't be a walk or you know a long conversation with your partner or you know some alone time like even if you can't get that level of cup filling or tank filling or battery charging can you get like a micro break can you you know do some five minutes of yoga stretching or um you know I don't know, even just take a nice deep breath, a couple nice deep breaths or a nice big glass of cold water, like whatever kind of micro breaks you can fit in before bedtime is going to boost you up. Like think about like if you think about bedtime as like, you know, an athletic activity or something that's going to need like a little extra juice, um, prepare yourself in that way for, for this like little marathon that we're going to have called bedtime. Um, and then giving your kids a heads up, and you might even do this before you have your alone time or your your you know micro breaks, but giving your kids a heads up about what bedtime, what you want bedtime to look like, how you want it to go, right? So this means first like set an intention for yourself, like I want bedtime to be like really calm and snuggly tonight. And just be consciously aware of that. And then give your children a heads up. Okay, so after dinner, we're gonna put our dishes in the sink. And then you're going to go pick out your books and have a little bit of book time for 10 minutes and i'll set a timer um and then you know i'm going to come in and that, that's when we're going to start putting on pajamas and then we're going to go brush our teeth like you just give them the outline of how it's going to go and this is like you can do this every night just giving a heads up so that they're building in their mind the routine and the visuals right kids need visuals so building in their mind the visual order of events so that they know what's coming they know what the next thing is and this helps kids to feel safe it helps them to know what's going to happen and makes it more likely that they'll do what you want them to do in the order you want them to do it in the next thing is to just get playful so you don't want to go like too crazy with this because i know kids energy levels can kind of go up at the end of the day when they're feeling really tired um, the reason for this is that they they're trying to keep their brain awake and so that kind of bouncing off the walls that happens might seem counterintuitive like if they're so tired why are they so energetic but the truth is they're actually like they're activating this part of the brain in the back here that um regulates sleep cycles and they're actually like trying to stay awake so that's why they're like doing that like bouncing off the walls thing oftentimes so you don't want to you know you don't want to go too high with the energy level at bedtime but using play can go such a long way toward getting them to cooperate and do the things you want them to do so um you know getting silly with toothbrushing or um, some kids respond really well to like a challenge like i bet you can't you know get your teeth brushed before my timer goes off um being careful that you know if you have an anxious kid they might not enjoy that so much so you have to kind of know your kid but if your kid really enjoys a challenge i know my son like loves a challenge so if i were to set a timer like he wants to beat that timer so that's really really effective um be careful also with siblings like you don't want to create a race unless they're really into that like if there's a competitive relationship that's positive great do it go for the race but if the, if that creates more negativity like maybe avoid the race race against the clock right but not against each other um and then even like you know just think of silly things like let's brush the doll's teeth and now let's brush your teeth like these kinds of things i know they feel silly and i know at the end of the day sometimes like we're not necessarily there for it like we don't necessarily have the energy for that level of playfulness but 
I promise you it smooths things so much at bedtime to just engage at their level. Like play is the language of childhood. So if you use play, you're just gonna get so much mileage out of that. Um, so just getting silly with the toothbrushing or, you know, putting the pajamas on the baby doll first or put the pajamas on your head, like whatever you can do to kind of get engaging with the tasks of bedtime is so helpful. And then as you transition from the teeth brushing and the using the potty and the putting on the pajamas, like all of those things, like as you transition out of those tasks, like that's when you want to sort of try to bring the tone down a bit so that you, you know, you've used the playful energy to get those tasks done. And now you want to bring the, bring the energy level down so that you're getting quiet and calm. Maybe you turn the lights down and then you can really take advantage of the sound of your own voice to bring that energy level down. So you can be all like energetic and playful and then we can get really, really quiet and you can start talking in a whisper and you can start bringing things down very intentionally and then, you know, turn the lights down and set the tone for a smooth and quiet transition into the next phase of bedtime. And so that might look like some you know, you might read a story, you might read, uh, you know, whatever your routine is, whether you have a few books. Um, this is also a great time to use choices. So let them choose, you know, do you want this book or this book? Now, I know a lot of families get in this rut with like, it takes them 10 minutes to pick a book, right? And so there are some ways around this. One is to do that in advance. So, you know, maybe before dinner, you have them go pick out, like, why don't you go pick out the top five books you might want to read at bedtime? Or maybe after dinner in that time when you're taking a little time for yourself is when they go up and pick out top five books they might want to read. And so they're going to, you know, then they take their time, like looking through the books and, you know, figuring out what they might want to read. And then you narrow it down. Okay, do you want this one or this one, right? Or, you know, give them choices and pick books that are a length that you're willing to read, right? I used to run into this a lot where you, you know, they would pick a book that's like just too long for tonight. Um, so pick out some books that are appropriate length for the time that you feel like you can spend on the reading and let them choose one that is of, of your choosing in the sense that, you know, maybe they've picked out five and then you, you get to pick like, okay, you pick between these two. Hope that's making sense. Um, and then, so offering those choices, same with the pajamas, right? Do you want this pajama top or this pajama top? Which one do you choose? So you're creating opportunities for them to be in control without, um, you know, without creating too much chaos and without creating too many choices, right? You don't let them open the drawer unless they're capable of doing it. But if they're younger or if they have trouble making decisions or if they're just super tired, you pick the choices and let them pick from one of those. So I could go on all day about how to make bedtime smoother, but I'm hoping that these couple of tips are really helpful for you to implement tonight. Get started tonight. Let me know how it goes. So I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.